okay so hello everyone so for this video i'm going to be teaching you on how to make your buildings into more of a human building with regards to the burst and death animations so for example we're going to be using the undead graveyard now before we begin i'd like to point out that again i'm gonna be using the magos model editor and the vertex modifier of um uh, anchor winkle so um you can actually download some of the useful stuff here uh, especially for example the mpqs because from what i've read the later patches no longer use the mpq files so again for people who are now using the more advanced patches or up to date you may need to download this if you still want to use the magos model editor so anyways let's begin so for example i want to have the undead graveyard to have the burst animation and more or less the death animation similar to that for the human buildings so first things first i'm gonna be separating it into a new file so let's have it the forsaken because for those who have been following my works uh, if you notice most of my forsaken buildings while they look like the undead buildings they have human uh, burst animations so Forsaken Graveyard. Now first things first, let's fix the materials or the textures. Get, let's get rid of this. Now, when it comes to um, trying to make your building more human, you need to more or less cut. Uh, well, the way I do it is I copy some of the stuff from similar looking buildings. So in this case, I think the perfect um, reference building for the graveyard is the human workshop model. So for example, more or less these parts correspond to some of the particles that appear during the death and burst animations uh, as i've said before in my earlier videos humans do tend to have the second uh, hardest burst animations because you kind of need to put them together more or less from se uh, from separate particles so we need to delete this this and then this one as well uh, let's delete this the spawn and as for the uber splat let's copy and then for the sound anyways oh before we begin let's you need to look at the and uh, sequences and see if uh, more or less kind of equalize them just to be sure again i'm kind of old-fashioned with this but i'm sure for the more advanced model modelers i'm sure they have uh, they're using different tools at this point but this is how I roll so it's 
Alright, so this is For the most of the, uh, the important one is the death sequence because if you notice the death sequence of the graveyard are pretty much most undead buildings is kind of shorter than the human building so you need to more or less adjust it so that there are uh, they are similar so we're going to be adjusting it Okay. Next step. The next step is what we're go uh what we're going to be doing is we're going to be copying uh, some of the portions or rather the burst meshes into the graveyard so as you notice we have this burst meshes for the workshop but now if you notice there are uh, the burst meshes of human buildings are usually separated into four sub stages before you come up with the final uh, mod uh, rather the final stage so we're going to be copying it
So I've kind of memorized this, but you need to figure it out, uh, this one for yourself, depending on which building you're using as the reference. Now, with regards to the Magos model editor, it's important to note that every time you add new helpers or bones for that matter, it's, it's important to save and then reopen your new model. Okay. Now, it's time to slowly put the different pieces into the new model. So for, we need to copy the texture, so do that zero to side it. Again, Warcraft 3, a dot mpq, important. Do that zero. Then create the necessary texture, or rather the uh, texture for the mesh itself. So the third one. Gonna copy okay, so there you go again, then again. Again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set on which sequences it's going to appear. So this particular portion only appears during the first quarter of the burst animation. Again, I've kind of memorized this already, but again, you need to figure it, this out on your own depending on which model you're using. So more or less, that's the three, three, three to so it's around eighteen. And then you have to make sure that it doesn't appear for the other sequences. So for the geo set animation, one means present and zero means absent. For the burst animation, it only appears from the three 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 mark up to the eighteen three 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 mark. Basically, one fourth of the entire burst animation. And then for all the other animations or sequences. It should be set to zero. Next part, this one, the one attached to the saw. So 
this portion, the one containing this so actually appears up until the end of the birth animation. Second quarter up to the end. In the last portion birth to the this one. Now the next step is to animate the saw. So again, you need to save, and then you can open the model as a notepad. This one, and then look for the saw. Now the saw has object ID six, so take note of this. Now open the model using the vertex modifier so you have seven geo sets so look for the one that contains the saw not this one okay so this one so again recalls that the object id 6 is the one for the saw now look for the portion or the saw portion there we have it make sure you select all of it expand selection and then assign it to one because again that's the one for the saw save now reopen it with z magus model audit editor and then uh, there the saw is now fixed oh by the way i forgot something now let's see the different stages for the building mesh. Okay, so second part. Okay, there's the third stage. That's pretty much it. Oops, forgot to turn off the undead 
so look for the appropriate geoset again the reason why it looks like this is because that's how undead buildings usually spawn turn off the animated color forget about that one not right there though now that the building mesh are inside the next step is to copy the particles for the uh, burst and the death animation so usually this one up to here you need to copy it into your new building now uh, what I do is again I do it manually I'm gonna be copying most first I'm gonna copy it as is so I'm gonna be skipping ahead so that you don't have to watch me do this one by one okay okay so hello I'm back so as I've mentioned before I was going to copy all of these particles as is and here you have it now take note as I've mentioned before is the sequences between the two models are different so you will have to do some adjustments so take note this ones up to here are the so-called death particles this is for the, uh, a death particle and sort of an a decay particle and then you have the birth particles so let's begin with adjusting the um, burst particles because those are the easy ones so as you can see uh, for the workshop model it's six zero to sixty thousand and for the graveyard it's three thousand three hundred thirty three to six thousand uh, as no sixty three thousand three hundred thirty three so anyways you can again I like doing this sort of manually I'm sure there are tools there where you can do some of this stuff um, automatically already but for now uh, hmm Again, so we're going to be adjust again as a, I've copied all of the particles as is without any changes, but now we're going to be uh, adjusting the uh, data for the numerous sequences. So that's 62. Now, more importantly, you have to um, redo the visibility data. So it starts 3, 3, three and then again. So again, those bird particles, this brown smoke. Now for the decay. Actually, we can just copy it.
so it's 200 anyways Okay, so the next steps are for the this one. You have to add sixty six thousand six hundred sixty seven. Anyways. Okay, so I think this is gonna be <laughs> taking some time, but you get the basic gist. So I'm gonna be uh, adjusting the values for the remaining uh, death particles uh, off screen. So I'm gonna be returning a little while. Okay, so hello, we're back. So I've adjusted the um, values for the dif uh, different uh, death particles. So as you can see here, Again, during the death animation, you're gonna see the explosions. Uh, in game, it's actually much more. Unfortunately, the Magos model editor is unable to show the complete picture. But anyway, so again, we're more uh, mostly done with the um, different uh, basics of the burst and death animations. The next part is what we're going to do. Again, if you watch the earlier sequences for the burst animation of the workshop, you notice that the building is kind of finished at different stages. So the next step is to basically chop the graveyard mesh into 
different parts so that what happens is that during the birth animation uh, it's kind of slowly being built upon itself uh, or something like that so uh, I'm gonna be showing you how to do it so again this is where the MDL vertex modifier comes in handy Geoset. So again, as you can see here, Geoset 1 is the bulk of the graveyard and Geoset 2 is the bulk of the colored parts. So what we're gonna do is, first things first, hmm, let's, let's just save Geoset as Oh no. Mesh. Oh, just, let's just call it mesh too. And then for the uncolored portions, let's call it mesh one. Oops, mesh one. So if you open these meshes. And then mesh 2 is the colored portions only. Now what we do is we chop it up. Now let's go back to the graveyard. No, forsaken graveyard. The one, that's the one we're trying to humanize. So first things first, we're gonna be leaving the base. So we're gonna be deleting everything else. And for the ge next geoset, let's leave these stairs only. Okay, so if we open up the Forsaken Graveyard, you will notice that we only have the base remaining and the set of stairs. Now what we're going to be doing is readjusting their Geoset animations. So for the base, we want the base to be present from the beginning. Again, from the beginning and the stairs uh, well I have something in idea it's gonna be appearing halfway so see there the base now we can I want to use some portions of the workshop as a basis Okay, so next step, let's go back to the meshes. So the base is already finished, so let's remove it. The next part I want to add is the, found let's call it foundation. Again, you need to add, I'm gonna be adding some bones. is basically gonna be let's call it mesh tree <laughs> this portion so again save it as a geoset and then we're going to be Reimporting it to the Forsaken Graveyard. Again, it should have the same material. So we're gonna be attaching it to the foundation. And then give it the same material. Oh, 
okay so let's see that and then again we need to adjust the we need to give it its own geoset animation so i think we should uh, sort of give it an edited version of the one for the stairs uh, let's give it Okay, so yeah, Okay. So the next step, I want some of these supports. Let's go back to the mesh one. Again, we can slowly remove some portions of the yeah, it's, uh, can, this part can be a bit confusing, so I suggest you do some trial and errors in trying to chop up pieces of your model. Also, I suggest you always keep a backup just in case you make a mistake. This is actually the <laughs> sides of the stairs. So. Again, some materials. Uh, if you notice, every time I reopen the model with the Magus uh, model editor, the Geoset, Geoset animation reshuffles again. So it's could be kind of annoying support again So again, we're slowly building up. like adding the supposed basis with the support yeah I'm gonna go with that I'm gonna be adding the basis of the obelisks into the support mesh so coffin so this is now mesh 3 <laughs> so let's add it into the support me 
dash three. So the obelisks. The obelisks are going to be the second to the last parts added. Now if you notice the obelisks actually have non-colored parts and colored parts. So make two bones for that. Mesh three again. We have the obelisks. Oops, there you go. That's the second. If you notice, the obelisks kind of need the top portions which are colored. So let's go to mesh 2 and take the colored portions of the obelisks. Actually, let's use this other Magus model editor to open it instead. So save export again this time we need the colored portion so this is the last nice So basically what we need to do last is basically all the other meshes that we haven't added yet. So let's set it to let's just call it house and then for the remaining color team portion house team color save go back to the mesh mesh one again we need to delete the ones that we've already added so delete this obelisk here delete this obelisk And then we need to delete the 
the main crypt or the main tomb no, what do you call it basically where the coffin is located we need to delete the stone portions of it let's take a look so this is the remaining parts we need to add the bulk of the house and the coffin and then for mesh to the remaining portion should only be the roof because we already have the stairs and we need to remove the tops of the obelisks let's take a look again nice so let's add the mesh one first remaining parts of the house okay now what i'm gonna be doing is adding the rest of the house second house and then Okay, so let's take a look at uh, take a peek at the burst animation so again in the beginning you only have the base and the scaffolding okay next you the bottom of the house the foundation is going to appear if you notice unfortunately when chopping the graveyard you end up with the hole so I think we'll we'll go uh, we're going to be covering that later, but let's look at the process first. Unfortunately there's clashing with this scaffolding. Okay. okay uh -huh. now if you notice i placed all of the uh, bones for the scaffoldings and the different particles in uh, under a helper so what i'm going to do is i'm sort of going to be adjusting it a little bit so i use this website to make some adjustments so for example the z uh, like, uh, 10 degree angle change so for example again the burst is during 333 and then we're going to be taking this and then see that hopefully uh, by rotating it a bit hopefully there will be less collisions with the meshes of the scaffolding and the building itself oh. 
Uh, just a little bit more. Let's go with 20. Let's go. Okay, oh. ah, I think that's acceptable. Acceptable. Hmm. Again, let's begin with the beginning. I think I forgot about the rotations of the saw. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oops, I forgot the adjustments. Basically, odd 3 3. Okay, I think. I think that's acceptable. And no more clashing that much. A little bit here. Nice. Now again, we need to cover the hole around the so-called foundation. So what I'm gonna be doing... First, you can grief it. I'm gonna be stilling the top portion of the... mesh that's mesh tree so mesh tree is gonna be the top portion hmm. next i'm gonna be incorporating it into the foundation mesh nope nope there we go so mesh tree Again, we're gonna plug the hole. Hmm. Yeah, and we're gonna be inputting. Uh, problem with the MDL vertex uh, modifier is when you're inputting some data for the vertices you have to rearrange it a bit uh, it's one of the i think one of the bugs unfortunately oinker winkle hasn't really been i don't think oinker winkle is still updating this tool it's been a while since the last update it at the hive workshop page for this one Now that Reforge is out, uh, some, I've seen some creators already <laughs> editing models for Reforge. But again, the models for Reforge are very much more complicated compared to the original models. So for the beginners, I highly suggest you begin first with, again, the classic models.
And besides, uh, one thing I notice also is that the Reforge models really cost a lot in terms of file sizes. So I feel like uh, the original models can still be useful in cases where you really need to jam in a lot of these custom models. Okay, now let's see the, let's see if that hole is plugged up good. There, see that? So um, there's no hole in it anymore. I think we're done. One final thing is to save it as an MDX file because MDX files are the file types that are actually used in the world editor. So while this is building, I'm gonna be opening another tool, the matrix eater. Funny thing about the matrix eater, I don't uh, use it for some of its function. Instead, I kind of use it to sort of test my models because this uh, tool will not open models that contain some bugs in it. So if it's able to open your file, it's uh, more or less most likely going to work in the in game or in the world editor again save and send close now i'm gonna be testing this edited version of the graveyard and try to compare and contrast it with the original undead graveyard so i'm gonna be seeing you in a bit okay so hello we're now going to be comparing the original graveyard with the humanized one okay so now for the death animation Okay, so we have the de uh, undead death animation and then... Okay, so basically it this gets destroyed like a human building. So again, thank you for watching and I hope you try out making your own edits among the Warcraft 3 models. Goodbye.